Konnichiwa. Good afternoon, everybody. The Six Man Never Overweight Tag Team Championship Tournament has finally concluded, and we made history. And also, it was quite a pleasing show as well with a couple of other events, and I think another match officially made for Jingu Stadium. With that being said, hello, everybody. Well, I'm just a simple man coming home from church, in case you're wondering about the suit. I'm not a business manager or manager or anything like that. And my name is Noah Foster, and welcome once again to another NJPW Simple Take. As I will be, of course, reviewing now the conclusion to this tournament, as we now have concluded NJPW Summer Struggle Tour de, for August uh, 9th. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I want to first kick off by saying, looks like they're trying to test a way to bring that fan noise back into um, the events. As fans will be getting um, a chance to test out hashtag NW, NJPW Cheer app. And apparently, on it's a bunch of ways to count with the referee, and say their favorite cheers and boos. I was going to mess with it myself, but uh, Twitter, I'm my own fan. I'm my own fan here at home, vocal enough. And I also learned from my good friend, Cindy G, please follow her at Simply Sinners Girl K. The app does not have Casa Ninare, which I think is a crime. So pff, I didn't download it. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about this morning's show. So this morning's show, it kicked off with tag team action. As the Young Lion duo, Uya Yamera and uh, Gabriel Kidd, they took on the Bullet Club team of Yujiro Takahashi, the Tokyo Pimp, and, <clears throat> uh, let, me get, let me get this right, uh, Gato, sorry, I'm tired, I've been up since 5.50 a.m. This is being recorded at 12.42 p.m., by the way, Eastern Standard Time, uh, August 9th. Yeah, I just got home, it's 90 degrees. Um, really good back and forth match, but it was, as you would expect, once again, via uh, PM Juice, the uh, Bullet Club uh, faction, trio, I might add, as John with that damn candlestick out there again. Uh, the team Bullet Club got the win. Of course, Gato had to insult the industry, issuing his own form of justice and punishment and reminder, slapping the both of their backs with a uh, lighter strap, aka his belt. Uh, fun, fair opening bout, though, as again, we're seeing what these young lions are capable of. It looks like a bunch of these young lions just can't wait to fight each other. Especially after seeing some uh, post uh, backstage uh, interviews from uh, previous days, we'll have to wait and see how that uh, flourishes. And all this momentum right now, Yujiro Takahashi and Jado and Gato proving how effective they are as a trio. Can this be Okada's uh, biggest loss to date? My probably most embarrassing, actually. Uh, only time uh, will tell. But hey, I thought it was a very strong effort. Now, moving into our uh, next match, we go into. Six man action as we have Kojima, Nagata, and Taguchi taking on Sushi and GBH, Intamaki, Homa, and uh, Tori Makabe. And this was a fun uh, six man tag team bout. We already got teased of what's to come for at least one of these men, as Kojima did call it a Desperado for King of Pro Wrestling. And according to uh, backstage comments, it seems El Desperado and Kojima both want KLPW 2020, and El Desperado has proposed a finisher only rules match. Which means that the only way to really go about this match is beating the hell of each other with your uh, finisher. And I have not yet seen the uh, backstage interviews from today's show. I imagine Kojima is going to have his own uh, response to this. And it intrigues me, I will say. It actually intrigues me to think that that might uh, happen. Anyway, this was a fun uh, six-man uh, tag team bout. As again, a lot of great tag team chemistry shown by uh, Kojima, uh, Taguchi, and wait, let me make sure I got that right. <laughs> Kojima, Nagata, and Taguchi. Yeah. And again, I, I finally learned, by the way, what that freaking uh, wavy Kokeshi is. I guess it's called the electric Kokeshi. Like he's getting shocked or something. I'm slowly liking that more than Homa's uh, Kokeshi. Both of them make me happy, but I digress. In the end, Yoda Suji, he really took it to uh, Kojima. Mad respect to him. And I'll give credit where credit's due. He uh, took a lot of that uh, punishment. But in the end, it was not enough as Loyato dropped Suji where he stood and, of course, got the win 1 2 3. But an impressive sunset flip body press combination by Yoda Suji, once again showing how much he's involving as a young lion and improving. <laughs> I'm just looking at this clip again of the freaking electric thing. That is so damn funny. <clears throat> 
Anyway, chops in the corner, chops in the corner. I'll give uh, him credit. He took those chops like a king. But again, I would never, ever want to be chopped by Kojima. And again, a good show on GBH. I don't know what's next for these two, man. They need to figure out something. Maybe they can eventually try and figure out a way to go after the tag team belts. Maybe one of them can get in KLPW 2020. I guess only time will tell. <clears throat> And Chris Jones in with some uh, back, uh, backlog for you. He says, I think we're finding the claps are louder than a smartphone speaker. So it's probably easier to go for an organic reaction than a phone. Unless it's different in the building, perhaps. Well, because they're in the different buildings, I suppose. Uh, that's true to a degree. But eh, I don't know if I would fully say that, Chris Jones. <clears throat> anyway, uh, moving on from there. And I'm just checking uh, NJPW Global's feed as well. See if there's uh, anything else I need to know about. And so far, it looks like, uh, nope. Okay, moving into our next bout. It was two-on-two -two tag team action. That's Minoru Suzuki, the king. Asaninare! Yes, I always say it out loud as soon as it pops up on the music. And his partner, Bukai. They took on the LIJ duo in Sonata and Shingo Takagi, Rampage Dragon current never overweight champion. And this match, there was one thing I was hoping for from it, and I got it. Very strong competitive preview of Shingo Takagi and Minoru Suzuki if they were to mix it up one on one. And Minoru Suzuki getting the better of Shingo Takagi, both on speed and maneuverability. Shingo Takagi go for that three move combo, couldn't pull it off. Minoru Suzuki literally circling around Shingo Takagi, outmatching his speed, locking him in the sleeper hole. And of course, there was a new cell robbery with uh, Sonata and Minoru Suzuki during that time as well. Good uh, tag team combination followed by uh, Duke Kai later in the match. They were really controlling uh, Sonata for the uh, blunt of it. And in the end, though, I mean, you kind of saw what was going to happen here. But it was interesting how it wasn't like a submission that Sonata usually wins. It was more so a, a technical wrestling type finish between him and uh, Duke Kai. Both men trying to counter each other. I was actually intrigued by this. In the end, Double Leg Nelson European Clutch, Sonata gets the win for the LIJ duo over Duke Kai. Very fun, uh, competitive, uh, back and forth tag team match. The part where Shingo and Minoru were just railing in each other, chops with chops and chops and chops, or forearms, I might add. And literally, I thought Shingo got knocked out at one point. Uh, that was ridiculous. But we finally get what I've been waiting for, and I didn't need a translation, but I'll be glad to give you what they said. Suzuki grabs the mic and says, Shingo Takagi, put the Never Championship on the line against me one-on-one -on -one in Jingu. And don't complain when your weakness means... You hand that title to me. Call on the Rampage Dragon Week. Only the king can do that. Shingo's follow-up. Hand it over? As if. This is a vital treasure to me. You want it? You'll have to knock me out to get it. Just try. August 29th in Jingu, it'll be the best fight of your life. We are going to beat the hell out of one another. Ladies and gentlemen, it's official. Jingu Stadium. August uh, 29th, I believe it is. We are going to have Shingo Takaya versus Minoru Suzuki for the Never Overweight Championship. And I cannot freaking wait. Milano's saying, hearing that on the mic right now, I don't think Shingo is a shy boy, to be honest. There's nothing about Shingo that shows me fear, timidness, or, um, what's another word I'm looking for? Um, embarrassment, maybe. I mean, I guess he was kind of embarrassed by Bushi's uh, post-match action yesterday, but uh, that's another thing. Anyway... Really great, fun, tatsy match, and I cannot wait for this uh, never overweight uh, title match. As we come back from a cleaning and disinfecting break, we then get eight man tag team action. As the team, that's the lot though, Hiroyoshi Tensin, Kota Ibushi, and the ace of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi, they took on the Suzuki Gun faction led by Taiji. In Taiji, Zack Sabre Jr., Davis Tegra's current tag team champions, and their partners, El Desperado and Lukai. And this was a pretty wild uh, eight-man tag team match. But when I look at this match, I just think about El Desperado. He's going to be out here to prove a point to uh, Kojima that I can win with my finisher. I think about Master Wano and Kamaru. I think they both want each other at this point one-on-one. -on -one. And then, of course, that backlining story now. Can Golden Ace prove why they deserve a tag team championship rematch? As again, Dangerous Tigers, they went for similar tactics, trying to attack the uh, Ace's leg. Ace with the hot start. And uh, Taiji with a ridiculous uh, high kick. Can we just get a match at KLPW 2020 of Taiji and Kota Ibushi in just a kicking affair only? Because I want to see one of these two try to knock each other out personally with nothing but kicks. When these two go at it in a kickoff, it is something special. The pants did not come off, though. He hasn't done that for a while, actually. Kind of surprised me. Then again, not big one-on-one -on -one bounce. 
Anyway, the interesting thing about this match in the end, finally it goes in favor of the team going against Suzuki Goon. As in the end, it was Kota Ibushi with ridiculous Kamagoye to uh, Taiji's face. Ouch. That allowed his team to uh, pick up the victory. And of course, then he said that Bushi clapped her. It's also the Tanahashi clap, too. High fly flow, the ace got it, pinning Kalumaro. So now I wonder, are we going to finally get maybe that tag team rematch for the titles? Now, truth be told, they didn't pin either of the champs, but they were on the lose again. And Kalumaro, he eats defeat here and probably doesn't care. I think more so, though, Master Watto just wants a uh, piece of him as well. As Master Watto, of course, put out all the great strikes. He has a really good um, kick bringing background. I still think he and Kota can make a really uh, great team. But we'll have to uh, wait and see, I suppose. Uh, let's see here. Taiji at one point literally saying, I'll kill you! And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. It's been a while, by the way, we've seen a high five flow from the A's actually hit. Just saying. <clears throat> All right. So moving on from there, before our main event, we go into two-on-two tag team action as we have Tetsuya Naito and Bushi taking on the duo from Bullet Club in the double champ. Evo and Bone Soldier, Taiji Ishimori. And you gotta imagine, things have been really in the momentum as of late. This was a very competitive bout. Naito winning here. You could tell rage in his eyes. He wanted to break Evo. At one point, nearly doing it. By the way, Dick Togo, spoiler on outside. He played that all right. At one point, the ref, he does get uh, knocked out. And literally, Dick Togo comes in and he chokes out Tetsuya Naito. Once again, it seems like we're going to have this type of bull crap. The Bullet Club, you know, doing anything he's necessary. The numbers are in their advantage. Blah, blah, blah. Except the Dicky Time Bomb. He came back. Hiromo Takahashi. He came back and beat the living daylights out of, you guessed it, Taiji Ishimori. But unfortunately, the ref did get back up in time. He noticed this. Hiromo, though, furious. And ding, ding, ding. Match was thrown out. Disqualification. Bullet Club was the winner. Damn it. Anyway, though, the fun thing about this match that I really enjoy is the fact that Hiromu's back because Naito needs an ally to help even the numbers against this uh, faction in uh, Bullet Club. Hiromu with one last uh, message also to uh, <clears throat> Taiji Tamori. Bullet Club cheat all the time and you don't get DQ'd? Should I apologize? Sorry. I kept you waiting. I know, I know. You're all worried about me. But I used this time off well and I'm all set to play, oh, say, in a couple of days in Osaka. Well, you're definitely going to have more than a couple of days as far as our coverage goes live because after the day, I won't be able to watch anything from uh, New Japan Summer Struggle until the 26th, even though they will have continued dates as soon as the 11th. Kind of annoys me, but eh, it is what it is. And yeah, now Hiromo's back, Tajimori, you best get on your A-game because you know he's not playing around. Okay. So, pretty good, I think, uh, opening match cards. We now have a match made official for Jingu. Hiromo is back. That's great for uh, LIJ. And I wonder what else might develop for KLBW 2020 and what El Desperado's uh, post um, comments are to um, Kojima's reaction to the uh, challenge he proposed and will it come to fruition. Only well, time will tell. Let's go ahead and talk about why we really watched today and why we were here this whole time. As we had the finale of the Six Man Never Overweight Tag Team Championship Tournament. And probably was, to me, the best six man tag I have seen all year. And to some, they believe it's a match of the year candidate. I don't blame them. As it was pure chaos versus chaos. An all chaos affair for the Never Overweight titles. And everybody did what they could to try and win these damn titles. As the trios of Ruin Mika, Kasuchika Okada, Toriyano, who also I might add disinfected the belts before bell time. <laughs> Freaking guy. And their partner, Sho, one half of Rapongi 3K, of course, and still one half of the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. They took on the trio of Hiroki Goto, Stone Pit Bull, Tamarishi, and the guy that everybody, I think, had their eyes and heart into this because we wanted to see it happen. Headhunter, Yoshi Hashi. Let's go ahead and talk about this match. Oh, jeez. Okay. So, Yoshihashi and Okada, they square off in the beginning, which I find very interesting. A nice, solid change among them. I like how Yoshihashi, he knows Okada so well. When Okada does that little fake-out, he literally answered back and hit Okada in the face. To my knowledge, only one, maybe two other people actually did that. So, kudos to him. Really good showing out presence among all six men here. After Okada and Yoshihashi got a good feel for each other, it was Sho and Goto that tested each other's uh, wills and tenacity. 
And it seemed that show was uh, kind of in over his head at this point, as Gola was getting the advantage here for his team. And then Ishii and Sho, they come into play here. And good lord, Ishii. Tomohiro Ishii is not human. I don't care what anyone tells me. All right. Tomohiro Ishii and Sho, they had one hell of an exchange. It was an amazing physical bout. Again, he just wanted to hit him harder, hit him harder. Hooray! Anyway, as the uh, match progressed, there was a brain buster, though, on Goto by Sho. Very impressive show of strength, followed by a double spear follow-up. And then we get our loudest, most comical point of the match. Yano, he comes into play. Mina goes for the turnbuckle pad. Sorry, I don't got a name for you. He does stick him up for seconds, but uh, he doesn't really get to uh, use it. He does pull off a uh, net breaker, though, that does allow the match to go into his favor against Yoshihashi. Only for Okada and Yoshihashi to control the uh, blunt of this match at this point. As it really, I thought it was going to come down to these two. People are thinking about the idea of Yoshihashi pinning Okada. I was like, what? And then I think about this match in general. Can I see Okada ever holding anything else but the IWGP Heavyweight Championship? Then my friend Cindy proposed, can Sho be a double champion? A lot of these fans came into play here throughout this match. Anyway, Okada and Yoshihashi, they mixed it up with each other. There was a good uh, blockbuster, though, by, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, by uh, Yoshihashi. 301 Assault on uh, Rey Mikasuchiko Okada. We had the Cold Breaker suplex combo and then a diving uh, blockbuster. And then all hell breaks loose from here. Everybody's down the ring as everyone gets knocked out with a kick. Got Lariat. And I think the last super kick kick Okada to the point he fell on his knees first and then fell his face to the map. This is pretty damn good, awesome action. Okay. Now, following this, we get a uh, drop kick, though, into a pile driver combination after Yoshihashi tries to go for the Lariat, and he does get locked in the Cobra Clutch. Oh, no. And he was locked in this for a long damn time. And eventually, he does not tack. He does not waver. He does reach the ropes. And then he eats a Rainmaker. And then Yoshihashi, he goes for, it seems... A counter to Okada's next spinning Rainmaker and hits him with one of his own. That was beautiful. And then a fall blur that turned Okada inside out and then locks Okada in the butterfly. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. You could actually win this. Imagine submitting Okada. Okada submitting for the first time in who knows how freaking long. Anyway, it was not to be, though, as this match was far from over. As Ishii, he, no, not Ishii, it was a show who came into play and did uh, break it up. There was a spinning Rainmaker uh, counter, and then Okada, he course counters that into a dropkick. Both men are down. This is it for now. Yoshi and Okada, we then get a tag into another one-on-one I hope to see maybe during G1. If, any, if nothing else happens from this match, show prove this match. He deserves to be in the G1. As it was literally him and this guy for the blunt of the rest of the match. Ishii and Shell, they went at testing each other's wills with forearm strikes. Back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Seems like he's got the better of his. She goes for the spear. Spear denied. Similar like Shingo Takagi basically does. And then he gets dropped in a brain buster. Not vertical drop brain buster, though, by Tomohiro Ishii. But then he follows up with an actual uh, spear. And then both men, they tag on. We have Yano and Godo. Uh, there was an armbar attempt at uh, one point as Yano and Godo tries to gain favor for both their teams as Sho and Ishii are still the legal men. He finally locks the armor, and Sho did on Ishii, but uh, Ishii, being smart again and relentless, in a way, he does uh, reach the ropes. Brat Breaker, though, by uh, Yoshihashi, ouch, and then a ridiculous power bomb on uh, Tomori Ishii, not enough. And then we get a headbutt, a staple of Tomori Ishii, good lord, he could stop a man's heart with that. Followed by a jumping knee strike by freaking Sho, and then a lariat, Jesus, and then another headbutt. And then the armbar, once again, fully extended this time. You think this is going to be it? Not quite. Straight dragon suplex pinning combination. Beautiful execution, uh, by the way. It was not enough to uh, win the match. And then there was a lariat that turned uh, Sho inside out as we approach the end of this match. A subtle uh, kick by Yoshikashi and the Ushigorosi by uh, Goto. And after this, double knees, sliding lariat combination, three-on-one assault on show. Again, show proven how much he could take, but he would not want to relent. And towards the end of this match, as we finish up, another lariat by Tomori Ishii. And finally, the vertical drop brain buster on show by Tomori Ishii. He pins show one, two, three. And ladies and gentlemen, the 12-year journey of Yoshihashi has finally come to fruition 
with championship gold. After the 1,260th time to answer the bell, he now can call himself the first time ever in New Japan Pro Wrestling, a champion. What an absolutely amazing, incredible six-man tag affair founded on purely nothing but respect and one man saying, keep fighting and you will achieve what you want to achieve. Almost Daniel Bryan-esque when you think about it. Personally, I like this better than Kofi Mania. There, I said it. Because <clears throat> it didn't seem obvious, but you want it. You want it to happen so bad. And it finally freaking did. What an amazing affair. Good Lord. I thought for sure, though, that Yoshi was going to tap out to the Cobra Clutch. And I thought Ishii was going to win it a little earlier, but again, I cannot argue with how good this match was. And I think it went over uh, near 20 minutes. And of course, Chris John just simply says, that was awesome. Also, according to this, Okada and Yoshi Kashi have been together since the beginnings in NJPW. Okada, the most decorated champion of all time, for Yoshi Kashi now looking for his first title. That was really an interesting story told uh, throughout this match when Okan Yoshikashi was scoring off during the uh, middle portion of it. Afterwards, after embracement and everybody, even Tomorrow Ishii didn't try and, you know, destroy his fellow Chaos partners or try to set up another match. But they did raise Show and Show, my gosh, put Show in the G1. Give me Show versus Ishii one on one. My god, that was incredible. And Yoshihashi closes the night and grabs the mic, says the following. <clears throat> Let me see if I can uh, get all the uh, thoughts for you here. Give me a moment because it was a powerful uh, match and also a powerful statement. Finally, finally, I finally won a belt. Maybe I should have thought of what to say if I ever won a title match, but I have no clue. I mean, he's in the moment. Can you blame him? So all I'll say, I've always said everything changes in an instant. And that what makes things fun. I finally delivered on my promise. But it isn't just me. Maybe all of you are going through some stuff. But tomorrow, the next moment, the next instant, everything can change for the better. I'm living proof. Keep standing up. It all changes in an instant. And Milano, emotional at ringside. Cindy, I know she was emotional too. I mean, this definitely touched uh, my heart as well. And <laughs> Chris John says, I'm not crying. You're crying. And someone says, who's crying onions? Not me. Not me. Anyway, uh, we go backstage for some uh, further comments. Ishii says the following. Maybe it took him time, but he took it slow, put one foot in front of the other, and kept walking. That's all you do. You face your fights one at a time and keep fighting. Further comments include the following. Maybe people think I've been spinning my wheels, not going anywhere. That's fine. I just have to answer to myself, and I believe in me. I have to fight my own battles. I'm just so happy I had Goda and Ishii by my side. I'm not a great talker, but I think I got my point across. You got through to me. That's saying something when you get through to the Stone Pit Bull of Tomorrow Ishii, who many people believe is an emotionless powerhouse. Yoshi Yaja says, I'm not here to be cool. I'm not going out there to say I'm tough. Respect me. I just wanted to say I always have the strength to face tomorrow. That's enough. But I've always felt never is the key to the IWGP, and I'm not stopping here. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll fight again tomorrow. And next time, if the next belt I get is a singles title, then I'll cry. That's for sure. So we are going to have to uh, wait and see as Chris Charlton retweets this tweet and basically says again, and I quote, and I agree with him. You can say that again. Sometimes the good guys win. In the end, folks, the good guy won, but we all won today with this moment and this match. Congratulations, Joshi Haji. Who might I add? He was trending. In fact, at one point, I believe it was said it was number 14 in America. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the six men never overweight tag team tournament. Congrats to my friend Cindy G on getting your bracket right. You beat me. Congratulations. Congratulations to Yoshihashi, 12 years in, finally achieving his first piece of NJPW gold. He's definitely not stopping. He can only go up from here. Mad respect, powerful message we can all live by because, again, we are all going through these times. We just got to keep going. Live for the moment because no moment, no two moments are ever the same. And just reach for tomorrow if it gets here and hope that it gets here too. And make the most of it when it does. Absolutely beautiful moment. By the way, Yoshihashi chants from commentary. That's how you know. It was special. But with that being said, that's it for this tournament. But the New Japan Summer Struggle is far from over. They will be in continuous action. But as far as the goes, we will not see no more content from this tour until 
August 26th, which will be two days prior to Jingu Stadium. And I will be back, of course, with Simple Takes on the remaining days, as well as predictions and Simple Takes on the event at Jingu Stadium. I am so happy with the way this tour is going and so happy what this tournament accomplished. What a moment, 12 years in the making. With that being said, the next content NJBW wise I wait for now is this Friday with NJBW Strong Semifinals, New Japan Cup USA. So that's all I have to say for now. So thank you for tuning in. If you want to know more about me, know this. I'm just a simple man and a lifelong fan of dot 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 wrestling. So if you want to follow me and talk anything wrestling, look me up on Twitter, nodq.com forward slash Noah. It takes to my Twitter page. And in Foster 9016, I'm on Instagram. I'll give you a nice hello, music in your day, moments, fought some wrestling, something to, you know, bring a little bit of spark to your life. Uh, speaking of which, AW Spark will be up uh, later tonight, as well as another simple chat live again uh, this week. And of course, again, like I said, more content to come with NJPW uh, strong coverage. That will be, of course, uh, this coming uh, Saturday after I see it this Friday. <clears throat> anyway. If you haven't figured out by now, the reason I'm even in YouTube is the first time seeing this, it's simple. Support NoDQ. I'm forever a part of Team NoDQ. For life. For every day of the NoDQ family. Well, sure, shirt. I have multiple shirts. Screw the contrary brand, too. NoDQ.com forward slash merch to the store. Follow NoDQ.com on your social media platforms. Your opinions matter. Comments is everything. Polls, calls, memes, gifts, reviews, recaps, sexy female pics. You name it, it's there. Primarily wrestling, WWE. A little bit of other promotions wrestling, too. And AEW. And, of course, support the Great Cherry brand. Support the Jeff Meacham Network. Jeff, I hope you and your family and your health are doing well. Support my friend Cindy G on Instagram as her new ventures. She's got big, big things for her to come. I know it. Support Team Ali for wrestling discussion. Support WrestleJoy. Support Sports for Rising. Support For the Win Productions. And my friend, her, the Archangel, James Hebert. As always, I'd like to close and support for wrestling close. That's the heart of it. Support wrestling outlets with being small. And let's keep growing this incredible, diverse, unique, elite, authentic, unscripted, unrestricted wrestling community together. Simple as that. With that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, tell a friend. Hit the bell and all the video goes live with this channel. Hit the subscribe button. Help me grow this channel. Shout out to all 162 you that's been with me on this fun YouTuber creator's journey. It's not lamp anytime soon. This channel focuses primarily on all things wrestling. Shout out to my ATW fan on Twitter. But primarily, you'll see content strictly around AEW and NJPW. NJPW, my number one promotion. And until the next uh, video, just uh, help me with this channel. It's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash no if you want to share the URL. Oh, yeah, before I forget, support Armbar, A R M B A R, exclamation point, and Aftermatch Wrestling, too. I'll see you soon, Radar Reckoning. Until next time, take care and enjoy the live. Tomorrow's no guarantee. Treasure families. Enjoy wrestling. Find someone, some promotion, or somebody to connect with you. There's more of it now than ever, and it's booming better than ever, too. Beyond the big W. I hope you all take care, enjoy life, and enjoy your day, and be safe during these times. And always, live for the moment. And have a wonderful day. Good Genyo, sayonara.